Hi, and welcome back to Caddis Island County Park. My name is Megan Zorn, a senior park naturalist here at the Nature Center. And today we're going to introduce you guys to a few more members of our slimy and scaly family here. Um, so we're gonna be showing you guys our three gray tree frogs right here. So we're gonna open them up. You can see right here, that little guy is Abraham Lincoln. We've got Martha over here and George in the back. So we do have lots of silly names for our animals here. If you watch Nikki's presentation on our Diamondback Terrapins, you'll know that we have our Terrapins named after famous explorers like Ponce and Magellan and Lewis and Clark. And we have a Harry Potter theme going on with some of our snakes as well as a couple superhero names thrown in there. So we like to have fun with it. Um, but amphibians are different than what we've been talking about lately. We've shown you guys a few reptiles. But amphibians are a little bit different. So amphibians include frogs, toads, and salamanders. So our gray tree frogs here, they have very delicate skin. It's a little bit bumpy. I know you might have heard that you can catch warts from a toad. That is not true, but they do have warty skin. And their skin doesn't have scales like a reptile. It needs to stay moist in order to stay healthy. They don't have shells like a turtle to protect themselves, and they also don't have um, a tongue that sticks out to smell like a lizard or a snake. But amphibians are very, very unique in the way that they grow up. So an amphibian goes through a total metamorphosis. So they start off life in the water, and then as they become an adult, they move onto land. So when they're, they're born, they, um, the mom will lay about maybe 2,000 eggs, in the water and then they hatch out and they're called tadpoles. They look like a teeny tiny little fish and they spend their young lives in the water. So they will have a tail and gills just like a fish does so they can breathe underwater. And then after a little while, they'll start to grow back legs followed by a pair of front legs. And then after a couple of weeks, they'll even start to grow lungs and that's preparing them for life on land. So after a couple of months, they'll be ready to go on to land and they'll have those lungs. They'll have all four legs that help them jump the way that they do. I know this, this guy right here isn't very jumpy, which is working for us very well. <laughs> so they'll, they'll continue their life on land as a full grown frog. Taking a look at Abe there on the wall, you can see those sticky toes. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So once they're on land, they do need to stay hydrated. So even though they spend their lives out of the water, their skin is very delicate and sensitive. So great tree frogs will live in the forest near a body of water. So if they need to, to drink up or stay hydrated, they can just hop in the water and take care of that. So because their skin is so sensitive, it's actually porous, kind of like a sponge. So they can absorb water and even bad things like chemicals through their skin. So frogs and amphibians are what scientists often refer to as an indicator species. So let's say for, an exa for example, um, we look at a pond and that pond is full of lots of healthy, happy frogs. That means that the water and the ecosystem around it are also very healthy. But if that same pond were to have maybe only a few frogs and those frogs were sick or maybe even deformed, sometimes frogs in a lake that's polluted will grow too many legs or not enough legs and they won't be doing so well. So that's an indicator that that environment is polluted or unhealthy. So we can use them to take a look at our environment and make sure things are happy and healthy. Now we're gonna take a closer look at Martha here you can see gray tree frogs have those bright yellow legs underneath. That's one way to tell that they're a gray tree frog. And they also have amazing camouflage. So frogs, they don't have a shell to protect themselves. They're not even poisonous. So in order to protect themselves from predators, because they're very small, very squishy, pretty much any predator would be able to gobble one of these guys up. So they rely on their camouflage to help blend into their environment. So I'm gonna put Martha on this log right here. You can see she doesn't wanna let go of my finger. There's a little hop. So Martha will blend in with that bark here, kind of like a gray color. And they actually can change colors, not so much like a chameleon does, 
but they can change to different shades of gray, brown, and a little bit of green. So you can see she blends beautifully with this darker rock color here. And they have that pattern on their back that almost ends up looking like lichen on a tree. And if we move her over to this bark, she blends in with that pretty well. And if we were to leave her there for a long time, she would start to change colors, start to blend in a bit. And they also change colors depending on the temperature. They use that to thermoregulate. So if a frog is feeling a little bit chilly, they might turn darker so they can absorb more warmth from the sun. And if they're feeling nice and, nice and warm, they'll turn a lighter shade of gray. So there are two different species of gray tree frogs in New Jersey. We have the eastern gray tree frog, which is what we have here at the Nature Center. And you'll find those closer to the northern end of New Jersey. And farther south in New Jersey, we have the southern or copes gray tree frog. Now they look completely identical. You can't tell them apart by looking at them. So you either have to examine their DNA, which we can't do, or we have to listen to the sounds that they make. So I'm, a, I'm actually gonna play a couple of sounds of these frogs for you guys off of my phone, so bear with me for one second. I'm gonna put them back. And I'm gonna play the sound of a southern gray, or I'm sorry, an eastern gray tree frog for you. And the eastern gray tree frog is a little more low pitched and a little slower. So I'm gonna put this up to my mic. So that's these guys. Maybe they'll call back. They're not very chit chatty today. So that is the eastern gray tree frog. And now keep that in mind as we listen to the Cope's gray tree frog. And you can hear that's much higher pitched. It's very loud, isn't it? <laughs> Sometimes Abe will actually spook me. This is this guy right here. If I'm in the prep room feeding our frogs or feeding the other animals and I walk by their tank, sometimes Abe wants to sing and he'll spook me because it's very, very loud. But frogs will use their calls to help find mates. So it's a way of identifying members of their own species. So only the males will call. Abe's a little more lively than the other two. <laughs> So the males will call using a vocal sac, so they'll inflate kind of like a balloon underneath their chin. Oop, he just wants to climb up my arm, doesn't he? So they'll inflate that air sac like a balloon so they can make that loud call, and that will attract a female. So we know Abe is a male. The males are, are also a little bit smaller than the females, but other than that, it's kind of hard to tell them apart. But that's how they're able to find members of their own species. Whoop, and find a mate, hello. You can see they're very jumpy. When it's time for them to eat, the other two will spring into life as well. Let's take, a, let's take George out for a second. Let's give you some, some camera time. Here's little George. So we feed our tree frogs crickets, um, some mealworms, and sometimes wax worms here at the Nature Center. And as lazy as they might seem, they will spring into action when food is put in front of their face. Now, they don't really stick their tongue out like you might think um, frogs normally do. They don't have a super long tongue that snatches flies out of midair. Um, their tongue is sticky, but instead, these gray tree frogs kind of do a, a lunge with, it, with their open mouth, and they're not very accurate. It takes them a few tries, and sometimes they'll end up getting the foot of their, their tank mate instead of the cricket on the first couple of tries. Um, but they'll use their front feet to shove the cricket in their mouth if it's a big cricket and then they'll just swallow that thing down. And they are nocturnal. Most of those bugs are out at nighttime, so they like to hunt at night. And it's much cooler so that their skin can stay moist instead of being dried up by the hot sun. <laughs> and you're just hopping around. Whoop. So they can stick to just about anything. Their toes are like little suction pads. But when looked at under a microscope, scientists have used really strong microscopes to look at their, their little toe pads. So they, they have what's called, it's a fancy word called nanopillars. And it kind of looks like um, the end of a, of a rubber brush. So it's the same consistency as like a rubber on the bottom of their feet. 
And in between all of those little bristles, they have a mucus that kind of acts like a sticky glue. So they can stick to something even like this plastic here. And even in their enclosure where they have lots of branches and leaves to hang out, sometimes they prefer the glass because believe it or not, <laughs> they stick to uh, smooth surfaces better than rough surfaces. And we've even looked to animals like frogs and geckos, and we've studied how they stick to things to improve our own lives. So um, sometimes we will engineer <laughs> non-stick shoes or non-slip shoes and even tires after the design of toe pads on frogs and geckos. Um, so those tires can stop cars on, on wet roads much more quickly. So we, we look to nature sometimes to make our lives better and easier. So I hope you guys have enjoyed our adorable little frogs today. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. Again, my name is Megan Zorns, and I will answer them for you um, in a little bit. Next, uh, next program on Friday, we're going to have Nikki out in our salt marsh. Hopefully it's a nice day, and she'll, she'll take you guys out for a walk there and show you the early signs of spring that we have going on. So thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.